The next part is to assemble the rails. As you can see, I already put them onto the rail. So the top part has to go in and you obviously have to attach the motor. And when you attach this, you have to be absolutely careful because this bar is cut very straight on the ends. So when you just push it in without taking care, you will basically push out the little ball bearings inside the LM8UU linear bearing. So be very careful when you do that. After you install it, you can put in the lead screw. I would not advise installing this with the lead screw attached to the motor because it just makes things a lot more difficult. So once it's in, you can just press it against the motor and then we will quickly attach we will just attach the lead screw to the actual motor and as you can see I'm using a flexible coupler and I just have two hex nuts tighten it nice and tight okay so now if we spin this it will move so now the next part is to install the, the, the feet. As you can see, this, uh, the X, sorry, the, the Z axis extrusion is it's too long, so we will have to cut it down. But before we cut it down, we have to mark it. So we have to assemble this before we can actually continue with that. So I just put in a little T nut so it cannot go anywhere. And then this part is also a little bit tricky because these holes are exactly 8 millimeters, and the plastic kind of pushes everything skew. So I don't know if you can see here, but you can see that this bar has to sit around there. It's not in line with the extrusion. But this bottom part will ensure that that aligns perfectly. So I'll quickly do that. is a bit tricky but if you wore the holes out a little bit then it should be fine so that's it I did not tighten the screw down yet but once we tighten it down it's it won't move but I, I'm just gonna mark it with a sharpie and then cut it off with my wood saw blade. Hopefully that will cut through the aluminium. So I'll get back when that's done. So I don't know if you can see, but I already made some marks over there. And I'm gonna put the blade on this side, on the side of the extrusion, instead of that side. And not that side, because if I cut this too short, then I have to shorten everything else, including the, the rails, the lead screw nuts, I mean the lead screw and the linear rails and everything. I'd rather have it longer because the top part of this attachment that attaches the, the Z motor is 12 millimeters high. And that we can move, you can move the, the bars down a little bit. So we've got 12 millimeters worth of play. So let me quickly cut it down and then I'll get back to you. So after cutting it down, I already assembled it. I used some corner brackets to give it extra stability because this is steel. Obviously plastic is not gonna be able to keep this extrusion stable. And if I try and move this, this is pretty, it's pretty solid. So I don't think it's gonna have a problem when the extruder or the hot end is going to hang basically on, on the x-axis so I think that it, it's going to work out and I did not yet put in all the screws and obviously I also painted it black um, I think it looks pretty cool so our next step is to then assemble it to the y-axis like that uh, obviously this y-axis 2020 extrusion bars needs to be extended. This was just a test of some scrap ones I had laying around and I just cut it in half just to make sure everything fits. 
I think I'm thinking of using some more corner clips on the side. And if you look at the back of the printer, I'm thinking of putting in a little enclosure over here where the microcontroller will be running in that will be controlling the, the, the printer. I'm thinking of just using an Arduino Mega along with a RAMS board. Um, I don't know which other board I should or could use, but I think a 32-bit board is an overkill for this. I think the normal RAMS Arduino combo will just do fine with this. And yeah, so the next step is to find a heat bed. So if we switch this around like that, so I don't know if I should use a 220 by 220 millimeter bolt plate or if I should try and find a smaller one. Finding a smaller one is actually very tricky. There's a Flash Forge something version 3 that has a 170 by 170 bolt plates. But um, luckily some of the printing stores have them on their catalog, but they don't they don't have stock. So I'm not too sure what I'll do, but I'll figure something out. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everybody.